Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm creating this cute little Halloween card with a fun little interactive pop-up inside. So it's a bit of a surprise pop-up. When you open the card up, you find this little bat sitting on top of the cake and I thought that was kind of cute. I'm using some Pawsome Stamps products today. So I have the Hauntingly Sweet stamp set the So Many Candles stamp set and the Tangled Web stencil. So I'm starting off with that stencil. I've got a piece of black cardstock here that I've cut down to five and three eighths by four and one eighths. So it's gonna leave a one sixteenth border on a standard size card base. I'm grabbing my stencil out of the packaging. I'm gonna hold it down. So we've already put some repositionable tape on the back of that black cardstock to hold it to my Make Art Station. And now I'm using some magnets on the stencils. I am going to go in with this Lawn Fawn Yeti pigment ink. It's a white pigment ink. And I'm just using this kind of makeup brush that I use as a blender brush. And I'm using that to put all the ink through the stencil and onto the cardstock. Now I'm being fairly careful when I do this that I get all of the um, little spots in the stencil covered. And also to make sure that I don't move my stencil around too much. I'm normally quite messy with that and my stencil ends up moving. But I was quite careful today, you'll be pleased to know. And when I lifted up my stencil, you can see I've got a really good um, impression there from the stencil. Now I have these two little circles that I've die cut from a stacking um, circle die set. One, the white one measures about two and three quarter inches, and I think the black one is about two and a half. I'm not 100% sure of the sizes, but roughly those sizes. Now I have a standard size A2 card base at five and a half by four and a quarter, and I've stamped out that little sentiment from the Hauntingly Sweet stamp set. Now for my interactive element, I have the strip of cardstock. It's about one inch wide, and I'm scoring it at one inch, two and a half inches, three and a half inches, five inches, and six inches. So it goes in one, then one and a half inch increments. I'll repeat those again. One inch, two and a half inches, three and a half inches, five inches, and six inches. Now, where that six inch score mark is, I'm using my scissors to trim off. You could, of course, use a six inch long piece of cardstock. For me, I just found this the easiest way to do it. <laughs> Um, now I'm going to go ahead and reinforce those little folds. I don't have a Teflon bone folder, I just have this kind of little plastic thing and it works a treat, it works absolutely fine. So I'm folding all of those score lines in the same direction, so it's all going to be folded in exactly the same direction and I'm just reinforcing those folds as I go along. Once it's done you will see that it will form a little box shape and this is going to be my kind of mechanism for my movement in my card. So I'm going to use some tape runner there on the bottom piece and adhere it down to form that kind of box shape. You'll see I've just used some tape runner there just on that very bottom piece, the very bottom score line, and I've stuck that together to create that little box. And you can see it moves up and down quite nicely. I'm going to bring my card base back out again and this is where I'm going to attach my mechanism to. So I want to start with one of those longer sides, the ones that measure one and a half inches. Just choose one of those sides and add some tape runner to that area or liquid glue, whatever you're using. I find tape runner easier for this because it, the liquid glue would kind of splodge out everywhere. It could make a bit of a mess. So I like using the tape runner. Now I'm just going to center that little mechanism inside my card. That taped piece is closest to the card and facing up, to closest to the fold in the card, I should say, and facing up. And I'm going to fold my card over and I'm going to pick up that tape. So you can see there. Now I'm going to add some more tape runner to that smaller bottom piece, the one that's closest to the bottom part of the card. Just below that score line, fold the card back up again, and you can see that it's attached. And when you open and close, it folds down when you close it and then pops up when you open it. So that's going to be the pop-up mechanism. Now I've gone ahead and colored and cut out my images off camera. 
I've colored this cake. I mean, I'm not sure I would eat a black cake with all this lurid icing on it, but I thought it was kind of fun. And I added one of those little candy corns to the top from the Hauntingly Sweet stamp set. And this is going to be my little surprise pop-up inside the card. So I'm lining him up nicely, making sure he's nice and centered. Then I'm gonna fold my card down and just make sure he's securely fastened with that tape runner. Now onto the front of my card, which is going to be relatively plain, but we're gonna do a little bit to it. So I'm gonna attach my stenciled piece for a start. So that's gonna go onto the front. It's, as I said, just gonna leave that 1 16th border all the way around, which I think makes it stand out quite nicely. I'll make sure that that's securely fastened. And then I'm gonna pull out a piece of lawn fawn patterned paper. This is from the Sweater Weather Remix paper pad. It's the 12 by 12 inch paper. And I'm gonna use that to create a little band to go around my card, because you will notice that with the pop-up element inside, it's not gonna stay firmly closed. And this way, the little band will hold it together and that little pop-up will be a nice surprise when the recipient opens it. So I've cut that down to size and I'm going to attach it so the join is at the front, again, just using my tape runner. And I need to make sure that it's firm enough that it's not just gonna slip off, but um, not so firm that you can't get it off the card. Now I'm going to attach that little um, circle piece to the front but first of all I'm going to glue my little candy corns down on the front so I've got the little witch and the little mummy when I get my glue working <laughs> I just need to unclog it so I will do that and I will adhere those two little candy corns into the center now you could of course um, stencil that black piece in the middle with the same tangled web stencil that would look kind of fun I didn't I just kept it plain and um, I was quite happy with the way it turned out but that's an idea for you to think about as well if you wanted to add that stenciling to that center circle now I've gone a little bit trigger happy with my um, tape runner there and added a little bit too much but I'm just going to use my adhesive adhesive eraser even to remove that and there we have that that's my little card complete with the little pop-up mechanism inside i think it's so fun and it's such an easy way to create an interactive card and you don't need any specialty dies i really hope you enjoyed this one today if you did please do give it a thumbs up please do subscribe to my channel and feel free to leave a comment i would love to hear from you Please join me again. I'll be back again shortly with some more goodies. Thanks so much for joining me today.